Okay. Well, I'm Dr. Sarah Lundstrom, and I'm going to be talking about electroacoustic analysis today. Electroacoustic analysis, um, often referred to as EAA, is a way that we measure hearing devices. So I'm going to dive into that a little bit today. Every hearing aid has to pass a quality assurance test when it's made. The standards for these tests are made by the American National Standards Institute, also known as ANSI. ANSI makes standards for a variety of products, including hearing devices, but as well as other things. Um, electroacoustic analysis, or EAA for short, is the way we verify the standards for the hearing aids in our office. The equipment used to run the test is called a test box. I know it's very inventive. There are several manufacturers and the boxes can look different, but they all have the same components. The test boxes themselves are calibrated regularly. And the purpose of the test box is to replicate on-ear use and to give the data on the function of the hearing aid being tested. The hearing aid is set up in the test box as shown in the picture here. There's a microphone for measurements, a speaker for sound, and what we call a coupler that represents the ear. The hearing aid is programmed to the manufacturer test settings through the programming software. Each hearing aid will have its own set of ANSI standards. The brand, style, and power of the hearing aid will determine which set of standards you use to compare for the results to make sure that the hearing device is meeting the requirements. So every set of hearing devices has its own standard, its own software, and its own um, set of requirements that it should meet. So this is where the magic happens. This is a picture of what my screen looks like when I run uh, electroacoustic analysis on a hearing device. So I wanna go over the six main measurements we look at and what we're testing when we test a hearing aid. The first is maximum output. This is how much amplification the hearing aid is capable of overall. In the picture, it's the red line you can see at the top here, and it's nice and smooth and flat, which means it's a good, consistent, loud output. It's capable of a lot of power. The second is the average amplification. This is how much gain the hearing device is giving you at a typical volume. For example, 50 decibels, which is the volume of speech, is measuring the power that the device offers for a regular conversation. The strength of the hearing device itself is a big factor for the results of these two tests. Some devices are capable of more amplification than others. So these numbers will vary depending on the strength of the hearing device. The third test we wanna measure is the frequency range of the hearing device. Human ears can actually hear 20 Hertz all the way up to 20,000 Hertz. So it's a pretty big range but we only use a narrow range for speech understanding, and that's what we're really interested in. Just like on your test for your hearing evaluation, we're usually looking at about 200 Hertz up to about 8,000 Hertz. So when we run the test measurements, we're looking for it to be in those ranges as well. In this one, you can see we're getting 200 to 7,500, which is a pretty good range. The next thing we're going to look at is distortion. I think this is one of the most important aspects other than overall amplification. This test lets us know if there's a problem with either the microphone or the receiver parts of the hearing aid, and it can make the signal that you're hearing less clear than it should be. In this case, a low number is better. We're typically looking for it to be less than 2%, and that's pretty standard across all manufacturers. Finally, we look at internal noise and measuring how loud the hearing aid itself is. All electronic devices actually make some noise. Um, everything 
that has electricity has a hum to it. It's called a 60 hertz hum. And sometimes you may have heard this, especially if you have really good low pitched hearing. And if the hearing aid is making too much noise, it can actually interfere with your hearing or you might hear a static or unusual sound in the hearing devices. And this can indicate that there's an electrical malfunction in the hearing device. Last thing is battery drain. We usually only look at battery drain if you have noticed that your battery is not lasting as long or it seems like um, it only lasts a few days. Now with rechargeable hearing devices, the batteries are built into the hearing aid. So we really can't test battery drain in the office for built-in rechargeable hearing aids. So probably the main thing that you're wondering is why does this help? Why would I want to have electroacoustic analysis performed? The important part is that I can identify areas that aren't meeting the standards and that helps us determine if there's a problem with a hearing aid. Certain tests can indicate which part is more likely affected and that's going to influence how we solve the problem. Some parts like receivers can be replaced in the office, but other parts like microphones and amplifiers need to be sent back to the manufacturer for repair. So this test is really important to help us figure out what the problem is, where it is in the hearing aid and how to fix it. When do you know it's time to have a test done? Well, if you've ever noticed a change in your hearing or you feel like the hearing aid isn't working as well, it's probably a good idea to have a checkup. We usually clean the hearing aids regularly, um, but if you notice that it doesn't seem like it's working as well and you've had it cleaned, then it's time to run a test to see if there are any problems with the hearing aids. Some of the common things that you might notice would be that the hearing aid sounds weak, you might hear a static sound, Maybe you feel like the sound isn't as clear as it used to be. Some hearing aids also have service alerts where they beep at you to let you know that there is a problem with the hearing aid. And that's their way of sensing a problem with the function and alerting you. That's definitely a good time to give us a call. Um, if you're noticing any issues, then it's definitely a good idea to have a cleaning and possibly a test to check those particular problems. But even if you're not noticing any issues, just like we recommend an annual hearing test for your ears, we also recommend an annual hearing test for the hearing aids. This is to make sure that your hearing is staying stable and the hearing aids are functioning optimally. So that way we can make sure that you're having your best hearing all the time. So this is a really useful test. Um, both of our offices have the capability to run electroacoustic analysis. It usually takes about 15 minutes um, and it's something that we like to do regularly, usually once a year, like I said, at your annual hearing test. Um, if you haven't had it done in a while and you think you might need to have it done, you can always give us a call and schedule an appointment to have that done. I'm gonna open the floor for some questions here. So let me get back to the main screen.